Hey M Squad, it's Malone. I'm back with another video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Malone. <laughs> yes. And if you want, you can be a part of the M Squad by commenting below, subscribing to my channel, and liking this video. I'm prolific, so gifted. I'm the type that's gonna go get it. Um, yeah, so this is what I have. We're doing. Close the door. A wing stop. Mukbang. You gotta have the blue cheese. So today we're gonna do a mukbang um, story time type of deal. And shower. Where's my rag? I told you everything. Get in the shower. Stop playing with me. And um, yeah. Oh, just a word of advice. I don't know, like, because I know I've seen, like, wing stop, like, um type of restaurants or whatever and the wing stop that i just went to they were more like kind of like a um express wing stop or something i don't know i never seen one like that but i don't know maybe honestly all of them is like that because i only been to like i think this is the first time i've ever been to wing stop but anyway yeah um they don't give you blue cheese unless you ask for it or any sauce unless you ask for it i think you have to pay for it honestly but I asked her for blue cheese after I paid, so I guess that's why she just gave it to me. But whatever. Anyway, just a heads up. Alright, so I'm gonna say my grace and I'm gonna dig in with the story time. Amen. Alright, so basically, as y'all can see from the title, should I? It's weird because it's like, should I? show the food or no like it's like a weird so yeah anyway guys so i'm gonna tell you guys um about the time that i actually ate an edible hmm <laughs> This is good. All right, so this is so weird for me that I'm doing this. I'm eating wings like this because I never eat my wings like this. Literally, like I eat my wings like this, like taking off the meat off the bone. I eat it like this. So the fact that I'm eating it like this, especially on camera, like this is so weird for me. I'm hungry as hell though. Oh, well, anyway, um. So as many of you may know, if you have been a supporter for a while, you know that I used to work at Applebee's. And working at Applebee's, I met some really good friends, like some really good people. Um, I started off as a hostess and I worked my way up, server as a bartender. And um, as a hostess, we used to do pure foolishness, like OD. So, Kimani likes to talk in the shower. But anyway, there was this girl that I knew who was also a hostess that I worked with. And she um she was like a chef. Like she was in culinary art school and stuff. And I guess her specialty was baking. And um she used to bake all the time, bring people stuff, people birthday. And she was cool with she used to bring them cake or whatever like that. And she had bought brownies to work. Now mind you, I don't smoke. Never really have. I think I tried it like once. It made me mad paranoid. I never tried it again. I said never again, never again, never again in my life. Um, so like I'm not about that life. So she bought brownies to um to work and she shared with everyone and they what is a hot as hell? She was like, oh. She was at it. Mm. Lemon pepper wings are so good. Like, they slap OD. But anyway, 
So I remember her saying like, oh, you only need one, and I was like that. And she cut them in like little square pieces or whatever. And everybody was like taking one. Mind you, in the restaurant business is a lot of, like it's cash flow. So a lot of drug users work in the restaurant business as servers because it's an easy way to make money to support their habits or whatever, just keeping it real. Um, if you know, you know. So, um, she was like, like she cut in little small pieces, whatever like that, and then she was like giving it out, sharing, whatever like that. She was like, here, she gave me one, whatever. I just ate it like it was nothing. I was like, oh my God, this tastes so good. Cause I already tasted her food. So I already know like her baking skills was like up to par OD. So I ate one or whatever. So then she put the rest under the hostess stand. It's like a little closet. We used to like have food there, drinks there, like hot and stuff or whatever from the managers. So she um she had put the rest that she had under there. And when she had walked away to go in the kitchen for something, I think she went to get a drink or something. I like took another square. Cause I was like, oh my god, this is so good. And as 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 a restaurant employee, you know, like we don't really eat like that. Like it could be twelve hours that go by, and you don't eat nothing unless you like stealing fries out the kitchen, or you got like some type of hookup, or a guy in the kitchen you know that's hooking you up, that care about you, or your man work with you, whatever the case is. And you could go twelve hours, eighteen hours working a whole shift, a whole double shift, and not eat at all. So I was just extremely hungry. I was ready to go home. And like I said, I just went under, like they took another like piece and like ate it, whatever. Mind you, I had no idea that this was an edible, like a wee brownie, like at all. I was just like, this just tastes mad good, whatever. So, she, she, she sees me chewing and she got back and she's like, you took another one? So I'm like, yeah. So she's like, you don't need another one. Didn't you already have one that I... So I'm like, why are you bugging out? Like, not that serious. But she's like, no, I just don't want you to, like, bug out. I know you don't smoke. I'm like, what do you mean? She, This girl gonna say, those are wee brownies. I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, those are wee brownies. I'm like, you're bugging. She wasn't bugging. She was dead ass serious. But automatically, I'm thinking like, oh my god, I'm bugging out. Like, why didn't you tell me? I thought you knew we were all talking about it. Blah blah blah, whatever. No, because when y'all was all talking about it, I was too busy doing my job. Like, what you mean? So, I started like, getting paranoid already. Cause I'm like, I don't know how I'm gonna feel. Blah blah blah. I'm just thinking about, you know, this first time like I had, or whatever. So. I'm just like, wow, this is crazy. Oh, she like, oh, just calm down. You're going to be fine. Da, da, da. It's like a different type of high, whatever. So I'm like, oh, okay, it shouldn't be that bad. She's saying it's not that bad. Shouldn't be that bad. Boy, when I tell you it is a different type of high, it is a different type of high. And I mean, like, in my opinion, worse. Like, worse. Hands down. I don't care what nobody say worse. So, so, um, I would say maybe like an hour passed by. It was like coming towards the end of my shift too. And it was a Saturday night. And Saturday nights are always busy. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be here all night. I had already agreed to, agreed to stay past the time I was supposed to. So I was like, at least I know that I'm first cut, but... The bad thing about it is that you just really don't know when you're leaving. Like you don't know when you're going to be cut. So. And I just started to kick in. And boy oh boy. I was bugging. So. Before I got to work. My gas light was on. Literally I worked like maybe like a 7 minute drive. Maybe a 5 minute drive from. Um, my house. So. My gas light was on for a minute already. When I had came to work, I was already late. And, um, no, I was gonna be late. I wasn't late. I was gonna be late. So, I was like, you know what? My gas light is already on. I can't stop the gas. Like, I'ma just go and, um, go straight to work and fill up my tank when I leave work. 
And it was a gas station not that far. So, I saw, after I started feeling it, I just wanted to leave. And I was just like so miserable because I was bugging out. I didn't want to walk any table, any um guests to their table. I didn't want to greet nobody at the door because I thought that they knew that I was high. Like, just mad stuff was going on. It was just so bad. It was like really bad. So, <coughs> different people telling, like laughing. Different people telling me drink milk to come down. Like, it was just really bad. So, and I, I felt like everybody that I came into um, contact with, like, knew. So, that's what made it even more, like, bad because I'm at work. Like, my manager see me and think something, you know, like. Um, I remember. I was, like, after maybe, like, two hours of me working while feeling that way. I remember it started to slow down the restaurant. And my manager was like, I'm going to go home. I said, what? I ran out of there so fast. I went under the little cabinet thing, got my coat out, put my coat on, and did. I didn't clock out. I didn't say bye. I was out. Like, I would eat 5,000. I was out. Like, well, right. So, I dipped. I went to my car. Sat in my car for a little bit. Heated up my car. Trying to mentally prepare myself for this little five-minute drive. Mind you, I didn't even notice that the gas light was on when I left. So, I'm driving. I get, I get maybe like three blocks down. While my car shut off. I'm like, what is going on with my car? Like, it was an old car because that was like one of my first cars that I ever got. No, that was my first car I ever got. So, and it was an old car. So, I'm like, why is my car shut off? So, now I'm just like, oh my god, da 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 what's going on like i literally stopped in the middle of the street of like like a uh, two-sided street and it wasn't like a crazy busy street but it was like a known street like people would be taking that route but and if i double parked like i would be sitting in front of like blocking somebody's driveway or something so i'm just like yo what is going on but when i started slowing down i kind of started like to kind of pull over some or to get off the street because it was like cars behind me and stuff and i started slowing down out of nowhere so i didn't know what was going on so i'm like what the hell so, then I remembered, oh snap, I had to get gas. So, I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Like, like what, what a perfect time for this to happen. Like, oh, what a perfect time for me to not to feel this way and have to go through this. So, I remember I called one of the girls that was at work. And she knew what I was going through because she was one of the ones that was, like, laughing or whatever like that. But um, I knew that she was getting off of work soon or whatever. So, actually, I didn't even call her yet. I was like, I'm going to figure this out. So, boom. So, I'm like, let me look up the nearest, nearest gas station. I knew the nearest gas station wasn't that far. It was going to be a walk, but it wasn't that crazy of a walk. So, I'm like, all right, cool. So, I kind of, like, try to, like, move my car over and double park it and hurry up and, like, run to the nearest gas station. So, I basically, like, get to the nearest gas station, which is, like, Maybe like a 12 minute walk, 13 minute walk. I get there. Mind you, I had to buy that little red gasoline fill up thing. And then I had to buy the gas. Put the gas in that red thing. And then I had to carry it all the way back. So that's what I did. And it took me, I would say like an hour, hour and a half, honestly. Because mind you, I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm mad paranoid. Like, I'm bugging out. I'm thinking I'm seeing stuff that's not there. Like, it's just mad stuff going on in my head. I'm crossing the street, like, you know, I'm not supposed to. Like, it was just messed up. So, I finally get back. And I'm trying to put the gas in the car. I don't know what I'm doing. I never did this before. So, it's like telling me something about... I'm reading the instructions on the red red little thing. And it's telling me about a nozzle. And I'm just, like, trying to get it, trying to get it. It's not, it's not working. Like, I can't get it. So, I remember I called this girl that was at work. And I knew that she was going to be getting off soon. I called her and I asked her when she was getting off. And I told her what happened and I was like, I'm gonna sit here and wait for you because I can't do this. Mind you, I live like maybe like four minutes away now. And I was just like, I just can't do this. I gotta sit here and wait for you. So she wanted to leave and work for me. And she came with another co worker that I guess was off work, whatever. She was giving him a ride. And she was more like a tomboy type of girl, so she already knew what to do. 
Like she was trying to like walk me through it on the phone, but I just wasn't getting it. Like I was high, like I was over it. Like I was like, no, I'm just sitting with you. So um, she came and she did it for me. One, two, three, boom, boom. Like it was nothing. And she put the red thing in the trunk. She like had a good little laugh. I don't even remember what I said to her, what was going on, but she was just like, go home and get some sleep or whatever. So, my car came back on, I drove home, and like, I remember I fell asleep on a couch. While I woke up, like, 10 hours later, I was still high. I was bugging, like, somebody had called my phone, that's how, that's how I woke up, somebody had called my phone, it was like the next day. Somebody called my phone and was like, Oh, do you drive a, um, a Nissan Sentra, a blue Nissan Sentra, baby blue, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, who is this? I'm thinking somebody stalking me. I'm thinking somebody following me. I don't even know who it was. It was just like a lady on the other end of the line. And like, I don't know if she had said something about, oh, this is an insurance company or what. I don't know if it was a scam, but I just started bugging out like, oh my God, somebody's following me. They know what color car I got, da, 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 da. Like, I was just bugging out in my mind like, oh, dude. So... I hung up on them, and I was just, like, stressed out. And my sister was telling me the same thing about the milk thing, and I'm just like, okay, like, everybody's saying this. Let me just do it. So I started drinking mad milk, and I feel like it just made my stomach hurt. Like, it didn't help me at all, honestly. And then I went back to sleep. I don't know how long I was asleep, but I was asleep for a good, like, maybe, like, the whole day, the whole next day, honestly. Woke up. Good thing I was off that day. Woke up. The next day. Well, like, almost into the next day. I didn't even want to do nothing. I didn't want to eat nothing, nothing. I wasn't hot, like, as high at that time. The next day, but... I just wasn't feeling it. I was just like, this is crazy. Like, I can't believe this happened. And I was just like, honestly, like, never again. Just like I said about smoking a blunt. Never again. Edible. One bad time, never again. I think the milk honestly did help me though. Cause I drank out of it. And um that was really that. I went back to work. I was the laughing stock of the whole stand, of course. And for like a week or whatever. Maybe like a few days. And that was really it. So I don't eat edibles guys. It's not good for you. It's a different type of high. Especially if you're getting it from somebody like personally making it out of the kitchen and they don't they don't really know like how much to put in what and this and that and that. like don't do that. If it's from a professional and you know how you know how much is in it and this and that and it's gummies and you're into that type of stuff and you can tolerate it then whatever to each his own. But somebody that's making it out of the kitchen and you a first time or you never like, you know. Don't do it. Just stay away from it. It's not a good idea, honestly. So yeah, that was my muck man story time. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed it with me smacking, 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 smacking on these wings while I, you know, share my story with you guys. And um, I'll be back soon with another video. Peace, M-Squad.